Hey everybody, Adam Savage from the Warehouse of Prop Store down in Los Angeles, and I am uh, taking a walk down memory lane for an incredibly good cause. Uh, if you are lucky enough to live in one of the cities over the last 10 years that the Mythbusters Explosive Exhibition visited, then uh, you are very lucky because it is no longer. Um, and all of the original props from Mythbusters that traveled around the country as part of that exhibit are now being auctioned off here by Prop Store to benefit the Grant Imahara Steam Foundation. And right now, I'm looking at blueprints, and I don't know if anyone's opened some of these in <laughs> the better part of two decades. I'm looking at steel cap amputation here, testing about the steel toes of boots and... Uh, this is my drawing from start to finish. I remember drawing this on the day. Uh, so th there were three main people that drew the blueprints. Uh, in the very beginning, the first few seasons, it's mostly me with a few blueprints or a few drawings having been drawn by Jamie. And then in most of the later seasons, it is Eric Haven, uh, one of Mythbusters' primary producers for a long time and also an accomplished, published, and award-winning comic book artist. Uh, and so I am going through and actually, <laughs> for the first time, letting people know who drew what because I'm kind of one of the only people that knows anymore. <laughs> I mean, I think Eric could do this and Jamie could do this, but that's it. So uh, I am chronicling who drew which so that you guys may potentially be able to add one of these to your collection. Oh, 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 this is great. Okay, here's, this took me a minute. Here's the thing. We would draw this part first so that we had it on the, on the desk and the camera would sit above that and get that. Then Jamie and I would shoot the blueprints and we would talk about the key aspects. And we'd always shoot the blueprint at the end of the episode so that <clears throat> we had some idea about what happened. If you shoot it at the beginning, you have to reshoot it because you're, we're always gonna be wrong about how the experiment progresses. But once we had shot the discussion part of the blueprint, then it was time to shoot the drawings that would be overlay over the discussion part of the edit. So I, Jamie would say, well, uh, let's, we could build a drop rig and then we could put a weight on it and da da da. And meanwhile, they'd be showing footage of Jamie's drawing that. So here what we have is a kind of an unbelievable classic example. Steel cap amputation. On the left, these are all of my drawings and my lists. And on the right, here are Jamie's. And you can see the stylistic difference splitting up the middle. And uh, yeah. The editors use these as B-roll uh, during our discussions. This is a classic. That is, that is really neat to see. Okay, I got a lot to go through. Oh my God, these rolls are quite thick. These have been wrapped up for so long. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to, that's an Adam drawn paper crossbow. Recently covered on Tested as one of my favorite objects I've ever built for Mythbusters. It's a very, um, a humble starting frame. You can tell it's me by the super amateurish text of the title. That's the difference between me and Jamie's drawings and Eric's drawings. Eric's drawings, the titles all look just, just fantastic. This is an episode in which our producers showed their incredible metal and contribution to Mythbusters. In order to film salvaging a boat from the bottom of uh, some body of water using only ping pong balls, we needed clear water. And in Northern California, there's not a lot of it. Uh, the San Francisco Bay Area is all very silty. So we had to go to the Monterey Peninsula. And the problem with Monterey is that it is a protected wildlife sanctuary, one of the most protected wildlife sanctuaries in the country. Um, and they gave us permission to actually sink a boat and then raise it with ping pong balls. And they had many restrictions for us about otter interactions and ping pong balls left over. And we met and exceeded all of those. Uh, the thing couldn't have gone more swimmingly. Yeah. And we were able to sink a boat and raise it with ping pong balls. There was one otter that kept on stealing ping pong balls. And we were able to eventually get all the ping pong balls back, but he would go down to the boat underwater and like grab ping pong balls and like swim away with them. It was crazy cute. Here, that right there 
is what Eric Haven is so good at. Hammer jump. <gasps> Season one. It's absolutely one of the, yeah. This is early season one drawing by me. Wow. In one of the other videos for this auction, uh, we are auctioning off one of Buster's original feet. And I talk about the fact that in this, which was the very first season one experiment we did with Buster, we dropped him from 185 feet, thinking the crash test time we would be able to take anything we would throw at it. And we shattered his cast aluminum hip and his leg fell off. And Jamie had to go back with like a custom Heinemann clamming rig to go find Buster's leg a few weeks later. Um, Jamie also spent most of the day at the top of this crane out over a dry dock on Mare Island, 185 feet in the air. And towards the end of the day, he radioed in and said, uh, if you guys are uh, almost done, I'd like to get down. Which is one of the very rare times he expressed discomfort over the course of doing the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. 101 uses for Gola. Look, it's even stained by cola. <laughs> this is totally season one. I drew this. These are all Jamie's over here. Jamie's experiment listing. Jamie. I love this. I think we might have put a slab of meat right here. Who knows? Levitation machine. Look at that. I built a hovercraft. I even tried a ducted fan on it. I was thinking ducted fans were interesting. It was the first time I was looking into them. Jamie, so here we have, this is another classic. Adam drawings on the right, Jamie drawings on the, on the left. This was such an important episode for me personally as an engineer. Uh, the legend is that a scuba diver is found in a tree burnt to a crisp. And the question is, how did he get there and what happened? And the myth is that he was scuba diving in a lake while a forest fire was happening nearby and a firefighting helicopter, which has these ways of drawing water up from bodies of water, scooped the scuba diver up. And when it was dumping its water to put out the fire, it dumped the scuba diver as well. The helicopters that they use on forest fires do have these giant pumps at the ends of these huge tubes that they can lower in water and suck up hundreds of, even a few thousand gallons of water in a very short period of time. But no one would let us use one of those. And so my producer was like, well, you're going to have to build one. And Jamie and I did the specs on it. And then Jamie got the flu. Jamie, who I can't remember ever taking a sick day, actually had to take two weeks out with this flu. It, it absolutely decimated him. And so I ended up building this thing pretty much by myself from scratch. And it was a 250 horsepower outboard motor that I extended the shaft by six feet, riding in a couple of dampened pillow blocks on the inside of this long tube so that it could draw water up here and spray it out here. Now the pumps that they use on the firefighting helicopters can pump 2,000 gallons per minute. And that was our goal, 2,000 gallons per minute. I wanna tell you that the machine I built pumped 3,000 gallons a minute. And frankly, before we built it, I didn't know that I could build such a machine. I didn't know that I could make something that large and that effective. This episode is like one of those inflection points in my history on Mythbusters. This, one of my all-time favorite shots on the show. Uh, the myth is that a water heater, when it fails, will explode and go straight up in the air through the ceiling of wherever room it's in, through the roof of whatever house it's in. And it is totally true. Water heaters are the most spectacular and terrifying thing I have ever ignited. Uh, they have a, a bottom that is a concave heavy, like 3 16 inch thick steel bowl that is the underside of a water heater. So when the water heater heats up past about 350 degrees, when it's about 400 PSI, I think, I can't remember the PSI exactly, don't quote me on that, that concave bottom, it prolapses, it goes all the way inside out, and that water heater, I mean, I think it shot 
700 feet in the air. And we built this little red schoolhouse out on Alameda tarmac. Uh, and we put a water heater in it and the water heater just went right through the roof. It was one of them, again, it's one of my all time favorite high speed shots. Absolutely gorgeous. So much history in these blueprints. So many stories, so many days spent covering these incredible episodes we got to make. And now you can put one of these in your house. Again, uh, the URL is propstore.com slash mythbusters. All of the proceeds from the sale of these go to benefit the Grant Imahara Steam Foundation. Get yours today. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna keep on going through this, but I think we have to stop filming.